The search for a new national chairman of the All Progressive Congress is finally over after former Kano State Governor Abdullahi Umar Ganduji took the oath of office as the new chairman of the party alongside Senator Surajuddin Ajibola Bashir as the national secretary on Thursday at the 12th National Executive Meeting of the APC. The emergence of Abdullahi Ganduji amid internal divisions and disagreements followed by the resignation of erstwhile national chairman of the <coughs> All Progressives Congress APC, Senator Abdullahi Adamu, and the national secretary, Senator Iola Umishori. For Abdullahi Ganduji, reinvigorating the All Progressives Party core ideologies and ensuring that they align with the aspirations of the Nigerian people will be a complex endeavor. But most importantly, the party's henchman says, addressing issues of unity, which he affirms is a panacea to strengthening institutional and financial capacity, is paramount. The journey to the emergence of Ganduji has been described as a turbulent one. But many party top Whigs and President Bala Ahmed Tinubu believe the twists and turns of event is a proof of internal democracy. Beyond the vast experience in politics and leadership of Dr. Gandhiji, many are expecting the crucial responsibility of healing divisions and fostering a cohesive party structure. All eyes are now on Dr. Gandhiji as he embarks on this transformative journey with hopes and expectations riding high for the All Progressives Congress under his capable stewardship. What should be the agenda of the new national chairman of the APC? This is our focus on the program. I am your carrier, Clinton. Welcome to Nigeria today. Joining me in the studio is Alancha Dominic, an APC stalwart. Good to have you on Nigeria today. Thank you. And also in the studio is Professor Oke Ikechuku. Uh, Oke Ikechuku is uh, a political analyst and is also uh, the director, the, is also, He's the executive uh, director, uh, development specs. You're welcome to Nigeria today. Thank you. Now, I'll start with you, uh, Professor Okichiku. You know, it has been weeks of events, uh, uncertainties. Uh, finally, APC has a new chairman. How strategic is the emergence of Kanduji? I thought it should have started with the stalwart who, is, <laughs> who are the owners of the party. <laughs> but strictly, no, it is strategic, mm. and I take it from several levels. Um, the impression is that the APC has just got a chairman, as would expect. But the truth is that the APC now has a chance to have to re-strengthen itself as a political party. And let's work with a little sense of history. APC emerged as a, a coalition involving the Action Congress. Um, I think part of uh, the CPC, CPC RACTAC team from uh, Rocha Sokorocha, from Izabga. APC came to power without creating party cohesion. That's why after the election and the emergence of President Buhari, the a renegade group produced the Senate president. The list of uh, ministers announced by the president did not appear to have been the result of consultation. And you find that within the party, there's a consistent impression that there's not one house working together. Now, I think, and the chairmanship changed from Oyegu to Shomole. Shomole, you know, left in controversial circumstances. I remember I was on, I said they should give him a soft landing, a bit of imperial uh, disposition in that position. And then finally, I believe I may be mistaken that probably one of the worst um, if you like, uh, profiles of that office was under the last chairman. Um, Lawan was announced as a chosen candidate, but it didn't appear there was consultation. <laughs> the National Assembly came up with a list of uh, officers. And what will normally happen in a political party is that if there's disagreement, we meet. You, what we heard about the position and feeling of the party chairman when he addressed the press, that is not done. 
There is no alternative president. There is no alternative Senate president. If that kind of so, it wasn't a good thing. And now Ganduja has a might. In my view, there might be three things in his favor. Ganduja is a very practical man. And if you remember the peak of the Femaheda crisis, Ganduja was the governor who said, I have enough land for all the cattle in Nigeria. There's water, they should come, and all of that. And his, his politics also has its own appeal. Of course, there are controversies about certain aspects of his tenure and all of that, but that's the political mix. That's what happens in nature on political evolution. But what APC should target with the new chairman now is building cohesion. Regularly, there should be some kind of party activity in every local government. That's how membership is driven. It's not just during elections. That was the blunder of the PDP in the 16 years, that you only had political activities during elections. So it just might happen that Gandhiji will set a tone that others will have to follow, which is that political parties exist to create membership, and membership is about political conviction. This is what our party represents, and it's by constant encounters. Party chairmen from all the local governments in the state will get to know themselves. Youth leaders will get to know themselves. So it's not just when there's an election, then that's when people get together. So he has a tall plate of what he needs to do, just besides answering the title of chairman of APC. Probably we'll get into that a little later. Yes, as, as the program uh, progresses. So I will, uh, I'll come to you, uh, Alan Chair. Uh, no, uh, of course, when I started with him, he said I should have started with him. I have my reasons. <laughs> he has his <laughs> my reasons. That. Now, uh, now mm -hmm. I want to know how did uh, Dr. Uh, Abdullahi Umar Ganduji emerge uh, as the APC national chairman? Along what party ideology did he emerge? Well, um, first, let me congratulate. Uh, Dr. Abdullah Ganduji for his emergence. I was expecting that anyway. <laughs> Pardon? As I was expecting Oh, yes. Uh, so let me congratulate him for emerging as a national chairman of our great party, the All Progressive Congress. And uh, to say that uh, there is much expectation from him. If you look at uh, party constitution, Article 17, uh, it talks about the responsibility, the duties of national officers, and the national chairman is expected to provide strong leadership. I will expect the national chairman, Dr. Abdullahi Ganduji, to sit down and look at the reason why Abdullahi Ademu was booted out. One of the reasons why he was booted out was the fact that there were, you know, a lot of crises across the states as a result <coughs> of the party primaries, you know, that what did not meet eternal party democracy, you know, uh, principles, okay? So, not only that, there were issues of high-handedness. He was single-handedly running the party without, you know, activating the other organs of the party, like the National Executive you know, uh, Committee, like the National Advisory Committee, the Youth Wing, uh, the Women Wing, People Persons with Disability Wing, all these you know, are some of the organs of the party. So part of the reasons why he was booted out was the fact that there was no adherence to our party constitution no, you know, uh, no return, you know, there, it was a fight for the return of the more, I mean, uh, constitutional order within the party. So we expect that Dr. Abdullah Higanduji, who I believe has the capacity, you know, and like I mentioned, Article 17, it also demands that he provides effective leadership for the party. All eyes are now on him as far as the party is concerned. We are expecting him to provide effective leadership, robust leadership for the party because one of his role and responsibility is to manage stakeholders. So I expect that going forward, like he's rightly in his speech, he alluded to that yesterday, that there is need for unity and he's going to ensure that he deepen internal party democracy within the party. So we expect him within the few days, you know, in a few days, to set up reconciliatory committee because a lot of persons are at variance with each other within the state and even at the national level, you know. So his emergence, you know, meets certain constitutional requirement. For example, Article 13.1 talks about 
powers of party organs. And I said it in, you know, in one of uh, the sisters pro uh, TV uh, program that when immediately the national chairman emailed that there is no need for a mini national convention. The constitution in article 13, you know, one, two stipulates that the duty of the national convention is to elect or remove national officers. And if you go to article 13.3, Subsection 2, it gives the National Executive Committee the power to also discharge all the functions of the National Convention. So what happened, you know, uh, the emergence of, uh, uh, of, of uh, Abdullahi Ganduji meet that constitutional requirement of NEC electing him. He's a substantive chairman. A lot of persons are spreading the rumors that he's going to be in acting capacity. No, he cannot be in acting capacity because the convention that elect national officers has given the NEC the power to also elect a national officer. Okay, uh, uh, in case of vacancy. Okay, Mr. Lancha, still on you. I, I know uh, you said quite a lot. I, I, as a matter of fact, you've really set agenda for him. <laughs> From Absolutely. all you've said, you've just set an agenda for him right now. <laughs> now, uh, at some point, internal division was, uh, uh, was of a serious concern. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, there were several insinuations from different quarters. Now, so far, you're a party stalwart. What are the lessons learned from these, from all of these? Well, uh, there are a lot of lessons that have been learned from all of this. If there is one thing I can say is that we learn how not to manage the party. The way Abdullah Yadamu and Omisore managed the party was totally, you know, uh, uh, unacceptable to a lot of us. So we've learned how not to manage the party if we look back at the way and manner, you know, uh, the former national chairman and the former national secretary manage the party. So, like I said, he should sit down with his team, the national, you know, working committee. In the last uh, this thing, there was no consultation. You, he talks about consultation here. There was no, you know, consultation with even members of the national, you know, working committee. He was just running, I mean, running the party on his own. So this time around, we expect that Dr. Abdullah Higanduje should be able to work with the existing, you know, a national working committee so that the expectations Nigerians, you know, and party faithfuls will not be disappointed. So we have learned how not to manage the party the way Amana Dr. Abdullah Adamu, you know, manage the party. Because if we must win elections, as I speak with you, we have elections coming up in Kogi, we have elections coming up in Bayelsa, and we have election coming up in Imo. If we must go into that e e election, then there must be, you know, party cohesion. There must be unity. There must be unity, uh, uh, oneness of purpose, and all of that. And the honor is on Dr. Abdullah Yadamu, the national chairman of our party, to ensure that he mobilizes, you know, our party faithfuls to have one singular purpose going into those elections. Thank you very much. Uh, the program is still Nigeria today. We'll take a short break right now, but the conversation will continue after the break. Do stay with us. Of the ruling is also dependent on another aspect or another harm of government. Nowhere in the world will allow under digital economy for banks not to be dispensing domestic currency in that economy. What would make this one different? We want to know what they do as occupation. All of these are attributes that our questions have been designed to investigate. In a few days to come, we'll see that we are all around the old crannies and uh, uh, everywhere in Nigeria uh, telling people to cooperate. Welcome to Nigeria today. Welcome back. It is still Nigeria today, and uh, we are looking at the task ahead of uh, for the new APC chairman. And my guests are still here with me, two gentlemen. Now, Professor, okay, he talks so much about uh, unifying members of the party, how much it is important, you know, to uh, bridge the gap that has been there, the division that has been in the party. Now, uh, we know it, it's uh, 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 an uphill task for the new chairman. So, how can this chairman speak to this particular issue? 
First, uh, my colleague here has already mentioned the fact that the party chairman must recognize the organs of the party. He must operate with, a, with full attention to all stakeholders, not a discretionary selection of stakeholders. Part of uh, Adamu's mistake was the fact that you say he was not consulting. No. He was just making announcements with all due respect to the gentleman. If I'm a member of the national, uh, of the, what do you call it, your neck, I'll feel insulted to hear something on which I ought to have been part of a decision and I'm being informed it's been decided upon. That was a huge mistake. It was consistent. It didn't abate. Now, but besides, so the first thing, recognize all relevant organs, recognize all relevant stakeholders, get them involved, not by way of information, by consultation. Even the current controversy about um, whether he has now been elected, whether it was the other, other smaller organ that is supposed to have um, come together to decide on him, what do you call it in your party? Is it the NAC or the Congress? Or? No, no, no. So, now let's suppose that the Constitution provides that three of us here can elect the studio manager. But there's also in the Constitution where, the Constitution where it's indicated that a panel of workers could elect the studio manager. That Constitution, if you read it clearly, once we be elected, it supersedes the other one. But mischief makers may poke at it. Oh, you ought to be the one. So what should we do? We say we're having a round table, a party round table on the way forward. So you call the very same people who would make trouble because they think they should elect him. That consultation takes care of their relevance. They feel good about it. They're transported to some place. Meetings are held. Look, this is one party. We shouldn't be quarreling in public. Chairman has a mind. Now let's take <coughs> this round table as a consultation. That's how you manage your party and your people better. But beyond that, the other point I'm making is that we need to have restoration of actual party politics. We carry on with the mistaken assumption that it's just about elite meetings, Abuja conversations, <coughs> party constitutions, it isn't. Real Nigerians are not in Abuja, they're in their villages. All of us are from villages. What is going on at that level? Nothing. And you spoke of elections going up in um, Enugu, um, Imo. Imo, uh, yes. and, uh, I think a little me. more than a year ago, your party in Imo State wanted to organize a kind of training for their spokesperson so that the campaigns would be enhanced. Across, it was to go around all the five states. So I was invited to the first one, which was in Imo. The first thing I confirmed to them, because it was a frank conversation, I said, if you want frank conversation, then let me tell you the truth about yourself. I said, first of all, all of you who are spokespersons in local government and all of that, you have no idea what it means to be a spokesperson. They agreed. What do you call them? Publicity secretaries. Publicity secretaries. Fortunately, your state publicity secretary was there. He was one, I think, himself, and other people who invited us. That's, that's the first thing you need to note. Second, in your areas, do you think you or your party is liked? Thirdly, have you thought of how to project what your governor is doing? Because if you take Imo State, now at that time, this was two, two more than about two years ago, yeah. Hope we had hope had tied a lot of what I call economic roads. You know, there were sections of the state that were had been abandoned. Somewhere about around or Kigo, somewhere around or where people just don't live there anymore, it's being cut off. Now the people communicating for the state were telling us how much has been spent on roads. Whereas the actual story is how many abandoned areas have now, life has come back there. That's, so, that's a role of effective communication. Yeah, now, effective with communication, communication, but with the, so I now brought that to the attention as communicators for the party. This is what you ought to do. You're not just there to be hoping that Olga will give you appointment in the next government. Now, putting all of that together, what am I saying? Ganduja is party chairman in an economy that's really going under the weather in a party that has still not acquired full cohesion since its coalition in uh, 2015? 2013. 2013. 2013. Yes, and all of that. So all those forces have to be well managed. Also, the party has too many big boys and girls. They should become less visible. We've seen party chairmen before. Akin Loya, this Akin Loya was chairman of NPN. He would summon the president. The party is the party in power. Is a political party that is in power, not a person. And that was the, we began to have a problem with the PDP, where the president became 
the head of the party is usually not the norm. And the presidential reflex becomes the tone of the party. If Ganduje can restore the strength of the party, while giving all, uh, all uh, persons their due respect, you see that it might create a paradigm that needs to be emulated, that needs to be enforced, because we are not having party politics. We are having election politics. And that's why you find that the same set of people will attend the rallies of five different political parties simultaneously in order to collect T-shirt. So, I'll leave you there for now. So I'll leave you. <laughs> I was about to bring you there even before you got there. So, um, Mr. Alancha, uh, definitely he said quite a lot of it, but I want you to outline what are the challenges you foresee that the present chairman will have to face you know, he, he's just uh, emerged. What are these challenges that you think you'll foresee? Well, um, in his acceptance speech, mm -hmm. I'll still fall back to that because uh, he talks about, you know, cohesion, you know, grassrooting, the policies of the party, okay? And the truth of the matter is this. If Ganduja want to deepen eternal party democracy, because that is where the problem is. If you look at our party primaries, like I said, it was a lot of persons were not too happy with the process because it was not a sort of a real a democratic you know, primaries where a winner will emerge and a loser will emerge and they will hug themselves and say, congratulations, I lost gallantly, you won gallantly. Okay, so, and he has promised to deepen eternal party democracy. The only way to do that is to activate and strengthen all the organs of the parties to begin to function. Thankfully, the structure within the APC is decentralized down to the grassroots. If the national, like for example, the National Executive Council has members, I mean, state chairmen are part of it, National uh, uh, governors are part of it. Uh, uh, principal officers of the National Assembly are part of it. The National Advisory Council, other like uh, former governors and all of that, we are part of it. If all these organs will begin to function properly and advise accordingly and take actions accordingly and give directives accordingly, I believe that the challenges will just naturally disappear because people are just anxious to ensure that you know they are carried along in decisions for example majorly the challenge that abdullah adamu had was the fact that he was not consulting with his members at all especially the members of the national executive council and they surreptitiously obtain you know uh, uh how do i put it an order you know, from the National Executive you know, Council, transferring the powers of neck to them. So he will sit down and any decision he takes is binding on the party, Thank which you. for me, it is illegal. Thank so Ganduje much. should look at those mistakes and avoid them and then quickly set up a reconciliatory committee is very, very necessary for us to have a reconciliatory committee that will reconcile aggrieved members of the party. Thank you so much. Well, that's it on Nigeria you. today. We want to thank our guests for sharing their thoughts with us. Thank you to uh, Mr. Alancha Dominic. Uh, he's an APC star. Well, thank you so much thank for, you for your contribution. And also Professor Oke Ikechuku. Uh, Oke Ikechuku is Executive Director, Development Specs Academy, and also a political analyst. Thank you so much for your time and your contribution. And to our viewer, thank you so much for always being a part of this. Don't you forget, Nigeria Today airs weekday at 7.30 p.m. on NTN News 24. You can watch this and other episodes on www.youtube.com slash NTN News 24. Once again, thank you for watching. I am Ikaria Clinton. To have a restful weekend. Bye-bye.